Welcome to Discovering. Stick around for a two-day adventure on the Menominee River. We'll take a look at the Menominee River State Recreation Area. Kayaking, fishing, camping, cooking, and of course, lots of scenery. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure Feelings that I have for this fine land There is so much to discover When you're a long-time lover Of northern Michigan My adventure begins here at the Sturgeon Falls Power Dam near Norway, just south of where the Sturgeon River joins the Menominee for its southbound journey to Lake Michigan. Plan, a two-day, 23-mile trip ending up at the campground near the Chalk Hills Power Dam. On day one, I'll travel the upper stretch, ending up at the Sturgeon Bend Park Campground, where I dropped off the Yellowstone. I'll also be meeting my wife Patty there, who will join me for day two of the trip. The journey will take me through the Menominee River State Recreation Area. The Menominee River State Recreation Area began in 2011 with the purchase of 2,354 acres of Wee Energy's land along the Menominee River and now encompasses nearly 10,000 acres of public land along the 17-mile stretch of the river. Back in 2014, I sat in on a meeting held by the Department of Natural Resources of both Michigan and Wisconsin to discuss the draft plan for the project which is co-managed by both states. We're looking again at what recreational opportunities exist, how people are using it, and we're trying to implement improvements so that um, it's a better experience both now and into the future. There are three units in the park. The Piers Gorge unit, which is upstream of my downstream route, the Coover Falls unit, and the Pemini Falls unit. This particular stretch of the Menominee is for the most part undeveloped. Just water, trees, wildlife, and quiet. My first stop, one of the four remote canoe campsites found on the Wisconsin side of the river, Stony Hill Campsite. The sites are for groups of six or less and available by reservation. At each site there are benches, a fire ring, a clear spot to pitch a tent, and a primitive bathroom. My reason for stopping was not only to stretch my legs, but also for a bit of scouting. I'm hoping to work in a remote camping overnighter on the Menominee River sometime in the near future. It was also time for a quick lunch. After eating an entire stick of homemade venison salami, it was back to the river and time for more paddling and a bit of fishing. The campground was still about nine miles away. Between here and there, the Faithorn boat launch still a couple miles away, another campsite to check out two miles past that, and then Quiver Falls, just over five miles away. Time to paddle. The 
Faithorn Boat Launch. Six and a quarter miles down, seven and a half to go to the campground. I stopped to check out the next campsite on the map, the Grand Island site. Much the same as the first. Benches, fire ring, and a nice view of the river. Another perfect spot to simply sit and watch the river go by. Just above Quiver Falls, remnants of old dams and cribbing from the logging era are still present. I don't know much about it, I just remember my dad taking me fishing at the old dam. I've been through these rapids more than once in a kayak without incident, but the low water made passage a bit more perilous. I stared at it for quite some time, but eventually the thrill of the ride was overtaken by the concern of the cost of the camera gear in the boat, as well as the vision of me swimming after a runaway kayak. So I reluctantly portaged around. It's a general rule I've come up with when filming. Consider how long it should take to get from point A to point B and double it. It's a good rule and fairly accurate. It's a shame I just can't get myself to use it. With the time it took to portage and film Quiver Falls, along with my constant urge to simply coast and take in the scenery, I found myself a bit off schedule. So I was forced to put away the fishing rod and make a steady three mile paddle for the campground. So after a bunch of steady paddling, interrupted by the inability to pass up a good shot or a good fishing spot, I spotted the landing, complete with welcoming party. The temperature, 90 degrees. The temperature of the water in that bottle, well, 90 degrees. I can't wait for something cold to drink. Time for a quick bite to eat and relax. Day two starts with breakfast.
With breakfast behind us, we filled up as many water bottles as we could muster up and shuttled the truck down to our final destination at Chalk Hills. Then it was time to hit the water. That's Pemini Falls. If my kayak goes through it, I won't be in it. That said, we began our day two kayaking just below the falls. Here's a better look at why. Today's journey, about six and a half miles to Chalk Hills. This section of river is different than yesterday's section, a bit more inhabited. I spent a considerable amount of time on this portion of the river, filming fishing shows with Mike Mladnik. Now if I could just remember where those good spots are. Along the way, Moscano Island and the Four Seasons Resort. It's 90 degrees. Stopping in for a cold margarita sure sounds good right about now. pressed on. The end was near. Another two and a half miles of slow moving water and we'd be there. The wind picked up a bit, just strong enough that if you stop paddling, you're going the wrong way. After a quick stop to stretch a bit, we were hitting the backwaters of the Chalk Hills Dam. A little more paddling, and we were there. So there you have it. The kayaking journey was over and it was all I had hoped it would be. Peaceful, interesting, scenic and not only relaxing but refreshing too. And there's still a lot more to experience. More campsites to check out, hiking trails and a lot more river. The Menominee River has always been one of my favorite UP destinations. It's wide, it's narrow, it's fast, it's slow, it's loud and it's silent. 
It's also a world-class smallmouth fishery. I do wish I would have had more time to fish, but there's always next time. I was actually looking forward to a fish fry, but smallmouth is more of a catch and release fish anyway. If only I could connect with one walleye. Just one tasty walleye. Well, sure enough, right there in the cold water, undercover, and on top of a can of beer, one tasty walleye. I can't think of a better way to close the day than a fish fry.